Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Or should I say, as we are talking about the Australia chart, g'day, how's it going? Right, how's it going? Three separate words, but you ram them together. That's how you sound like an Aussie. All right, so before I get into the Australia chart, what I thought I would do is I would share with you some important links. And these links will tell you what's going on here. Okay, these links will shed some light on information that's probably not easy to get from mainstream media. Though one of the links that I'm going to share with you is from mainstream media. So that's pretty incredible. You have to watch that one. But if you would like to really get a feel for what is going on here, uh, and I am kind of in the heart of Sydney, Australia here. I'm kind of in the middle. You, know, you take a 15 minute drive that way and you end up seeing some of the action that is being broadcast on Rebel News on YouTube. If you take a 15 minute drive in that direction there, you will end up at Ozzy Cossack's place. I have been watching Ozzy Cossack. Every time he launches a video, I'm there watching. I think I was like in the 20,000 subscribers, he's now got 110,000 subscribers. It's just amazing. And that's in a very short space of time. He has grown that quickly. It's, it's really incredible. And he deserves it because he is an Aussie hero. He's an Aussie legend. He is the best thing, I think, that we have in this country right now. He's, he's getting me through these crazy times. Um, but if you would like to know from other people as well what is going on here, then I recommend the first link I'm going to share with you is a Qantas pilot who speaks out about the mandate, about the fact that he doesn't want to have to take it. He's incredibly courageous. He is honest. He is admirable. He, I, I love listening to this. I, I watched it twice. It was so good. So definitely watch that. It's on rumble.com. I'll put the link below. Um, and as with all of these links, please watch these links. You can stop watching me. This, this video isn't wildly exciting. If you want to hang out for the Astro Chat, do hang out. Um, it's a cup of tea video, but you'll get more value from watching these links. So definitely watch the Qantas pilot. Definitely watch um, the young policeman. He's this wonderful young policeman who speaks. And I'm not going to talk too much about what these people do because I don't want to get censored either. But like um, he's on Vimeo.com speaking about what is really going on here. He says that a lot of police people do not agree with some of the things that they are being asked to do. These are good people in, you know, good men and women in uniform who they, they don't agree with what's going on, yet they're having to do it. They're in tough spots where they have to do certain things. They have to pay their bills, etc., etc. And he has left the force and he's trying to help those people within the organization bring about change for all of us, right? Um, the third link I'm going to share with you, now this is from mainstream media. This just blows my mind, okay, that this has been put on ABC Media Watch, right? I used to watch Media Watch a long, long time ago. It was such a clever, um, you know, journalistic spot on the ABC. I used to love it. Well, th they are still uncovering truth, it would seem. They have shown how some of the people that are being broadcast on mainstream channels are actually just paid actors, basically. It's pretty mind-blowing stuff. So that's ABC News Watch. So if you are an Aussie who's watching and, you know, maybe you've got friends or family that you want to introduce to alternative concepts, that could be a good link to share with them, okay? Um, the other link I have is the Cairns News. They've got this thing about how the New South Wales government has actually stated that it's not mandatory, that the, the program that they appear to be trying to make mandatory is actually legally not. So I thought that was a very important link to share with you. And the other two links that I've got, I've got the headline here, what is Australia? Is it a country? Or is it an American company right now? I'm not sure about any of this. I this I'm skeptical of these two links. So I've got one Australia an American com company. 
a question mark and I'll put the link there. And the other one is who owns everything in Australia? Question mark and I'll put the link there. Now the second link, I'm very skeptical of that one. I did watch it, I did enjoy it, but um, there are various reasons. I did some further research as to what is Pekamaru. You might have heard about Pekamaru. Um, I've heard about it and I did some further research and some people are claiming that there's nothing in that. But the reason I share those two links, I think they're important to watch. The reason I think they're important to watch is because it shows a different style of thinking. And the first link, I think that's quite true about Australia being an American company. That's a company owned by the Treasury Department of this country. And it, it seems like it was created to safeguard Australia during the 2008 crisis, but it wasn't really used. So, okay, that's fair enough. That's quite believable. But the second link is interesting, even though there were certain things that flagged my attention where I kind of went, mm, I'm not sure about this. And the thing that flagged my attention was the, the gentleman who's sat there and there's an American flag behind him and he kept saying, give me your email address, give me your email address. And I'm just like, oh, I think he wants to sell something. So that kind of did put me off. But the reason I like that video, and I'm including the link there, is because it gets you to expand your mind as to what is a country, what is a company, what is all this stuff. And I made a video, and I'll put the link above, which I said, um, lies, 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 where is the truth? And yeah, I mean, at this stage of the game, I, I'm not sure what Australia is. Is it a country as a company I'm, I'm willing to entertain all kinds of things in this regard but let's get into the chart and let's see what we can see now is there one chart unfortunately no there is not one chart and this makes it really really difficult for me to predict so we've got there's an astrologer who has identified five different charts and i'm going to read out the different dates she has said 26 jan 1788 we are going to look at that one She's got 7 Feb 1788, she's got 1 Jan 1901, we're definitely looking at that one, that's a very good chart, that's very strong. Um, we've got 9 May 1901, we've got 27 May 1967. And if you look at the links below where people are debating about the fact that Australia is a company, it's not even a country, we've got the dates 29 June 2009, We've got, I think it's 2nd November 1967, something like that. So we've got a lot of charts to look at. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at, to me, what feel like the two most obvious charts. And then I'm going to take you through some predictions I have for the years 2023 to about 2025. We're going to have a look at that chunk of time. So let's start with the 1788 chart. To me, this chart represents Australia culturally. This has a feel and a flavor of the culture of Australia. When I look at this chart, I'm kind of seeing this is the country that I grew up in. Now, let me bring it up. Yeah, I do, I do recognize this, uh, the feel of it anyway, because me, I'm a bit of an intuitive astrologer. I'm not terribly scientific. Um, I, I just kind of go by feel a little bit more than anything else. So this chart is linked in with Captain Cook finding Australia. And if we have a look at the first house, we've got Mars and Ketu there in that first house. And it's governed by Gemini, it's lauded by Mercury, right? So this is very interesting. Uh, but the, straight away, the thing that I see with that first house is that there's a huge amount of masculine energy. Ketu is often seen as Mars. So we've kind of got like double Mars there in that first house. Isn't that fascinating? And the thing that I like about this is that Australia, I've always thought this, I've always thought that Australia is a very blokey country. It's very male dominated, you know. Um, and even like over here, what I've noticed is women really get into football. Whereas in England, which I think is a much more feminine country, and probably why I really love being there. I love being here too, you know, but I, I love being there and I love it. it's more feminine. And that's the country where, you know, in this country, women will watch football. And in England, 
men will actively not watch football like i remember working in advertising maybe it's an advertising thing i don't know but so many guys there were just like oh we don't watch football like they, isn't that amazing whereas this country all the women are watching football like there's a there's a lot of masculine energy here in australia and, and in this chart it's very much present um i've got the note here seventh house culturally we've got rahu in the seventh there anyone who's got rahu in the seventh house you know that that's a placement where you will see the world. And Australia, culturally, I've got the note here, all Aussies have the travel bug. It's true. My mum would often remark, this was like in the 80s, you know, you'd watch the news on TV and there'd be like a mudslide or something in some South American country, and like a bus would have turned over or something. And my mum would always say, it's always a, there's always an Aussie on board, you know, there's all, in it, some crisis all around the world, like it could be some really obscure place, there's always an Aussie there, it's so true. Aussies are great and prolific travellers, we have to be because we're so isolated, we're so far away from everything, so there is definitely this, this travel thing that we have here. Now the 8th and 12th houses, what do we have here, and I'm just looking the battery is flashing. I think I'm going to get a new battery here because otherwise it's going to cut out on me. Okay, we're back. Fresh battery. It's all good. Now, I think I was talking about the 8th and 12th houses. This is quite interesting because uh, we've got this industrial sort of 8th house here, Capricorn. We've got Pluto, Sun, Mercury. We've got Jupiter there in Taurus in the 12th. And what I'd written here was that we've got a lot of brilliant Aussie companies and inventions are actually hidden. People don't know that these things are Australian. So you look at companies like Atlassian, that's actually Australian. Um, Cochlear is another one that I thought of, but there, there are heaps of them. They're just not springing to mind right now, but there are quite a lot. And we've also got a problem a cultural problem that has been going on 80s and 90s in particular I think even before that Clive James used to talk about it we have this thing called the brain drain so we have talented smart people in this country would leave they would go overseas and you look at that we've got the professor we've got Jupiter up there in the 12th right a lot of intelligent people will leave they'll go overseas they don't stay here they go elsewhere to pursue success so what are some of the other placements? Third house, I've got the, you know, the she'll be right attitude, that Leo in, well, that moon in Leo, I should say, in the third house. Um, there's a bit of humor there, and the culture's always got a bit of humor, doesn't it? Uh, we've got ninth house, work-wise, Aussies are very hardworking and conservative. Yes, this is so true. And I was remembering, as I was reflecting on this, and I was thinking about, how when I've worked overseas, um, when I was at Accenture, I was posted to do some work in Chicago and I worked as well in London. And whenever I've worked somewhere else, Australians have a reputation of being very hardworking and actually very conservative. I had an English creative director here at Leo Burnett in Sydney, and he was shocked as to how hard we work here. He said, gosh, you know, in England, Friday midday we're all at the pub he's like we're not working and he couldn't believe that like you know some of us be working till like six or seven on a Friday kind of thing he couldn't believe it he was just like what so yeah I think that's something that people don't really um, realize there are a lot of Brits that come here they think oh well, let's have a wonderful life here and you know have a great time be on the beach you know all that and then they come here and they're like oh my god these people work really really hard uh, yes there's, there's a real work culture here and from what I have found maybe I don't know maybe I've been working at all the wrong companies I don't know but um, but I, I have worked at, at quite a few different places anyway that is how I see this 1788 chart I see this culturally that's how I see this playing out I see this as having kind of established the culture and some of these elements that I'm talking about. Now, when we take a look at this 1901 chart, now I start to see the government. Okay, 
Uh, and this technically is the day of the formation of Australia's government. This is, um, yeah, Australia became a nation on this day, I believe. This is the time when, you know, they got their, I guess they got their power back from Britain or something like that. Yeah, they did. They, they kind of became a nation on their own two feet. Australia became a nation on its own two feet. How do you phrase that? I don't know. Anyway, let's take a look at the chart. So I've got it up on my screen. I got here now the first thing that drew me in straight away was that moon in the eighth house look at that moon in the eighth what happened here in this country we have the stolen generations this is where children were forcibly taken away from their mothers this is like a horrible chapter of, of australia's history it's 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 incredibly bad and we, we can see that, that something like this would happen. And if we look at the Dasha system, we've got the moon Dasha beginning 1917. And I believe that the stolen generations really happened from about 1910, I think right up until the 70s. And it's really interesting that 1968, we've got Saturn Mahadasha stepping in, Saturn based in Sagittarius. It, it is this... Um, Kind of fatherly energy mind you something could have changed in 52 as well we have jupiter there so i wonder what those years were like but i do see that that moon dasha in that early uh part of the dasha setup that works perfectly with this historical element the other way that i see that this chart is accurate is that we've got the fourth house there this was one of the key parts that said to me this chart is absolutely correct for the government of this country the federal government of this country because we have four planets and they're very key critical planets in the running of a country these are all based in the fourth house now this is significant <clears throat> because a lot of Australia's Parliament is actually underground and this has been acknowledged through mainstream media that, that they have published information about this i know that annabelle crab did a tour of parliament house which i watched that three part documentary series i think i watched that while i was in england and yeah there's there are quite a few floors underneath the parliament building but through information that I've found from channelers and remote viewers, apparently there are lots of government departments, even like I've heard like CIA bases and things like that. There's a lot that happens underground um, here in Australia. And yes, there are tunnels and things like that. And I know there's some very um, awful and unpleasant stuff. I do know about all that. Yes, correct. So that is really being depicted here by all this energy being, because you've got the 10th house, which is above, and then below the ground, you've got the fourth house. So we've got all that planetary energy right there. So I definitely see this uh, as, being, as being the chart. Now, what about some of the other placements? We've got Rahu Venus there um, in the house of other people's money. Yes, I mean, we can see that this is the government because one of the things I observed when I watched that Annabelle Crabb documentary about Australia's parliament was I just couldn't, it was dripping with money. I couldn't believe, you know, that is really like, wow. And that is other people's money. And I must admit, they have been busy um, passing a lot of laws to pay themselves a lot of bonuses and a lot of big pensions and all this kind of thing. So, I mean, we see that there, Rahu Venus, uh, in the, the heart of other people's money right there. Yes, correct. And Mars, let's just tick off Mars. Mars is, well, that's fascinating actually, because we've got Mars in uh, Leo, Leo the kingdom. And where is this kingdom? It's a foreign kingdom. Okay, so there is still a bit of power um, invested there with England okay so that's definitely how I'm going to read that Mars there there is still some element of control or power uh, that you know a foreign kingdom has over this place we can see that in this chart so I'm actually very happy with this 1901 chart now if we take a look at these two charts side by side and we see okay 
And I, I've got on my, I've got some handwritten notes here on my, uh, on my journal here. I've got some notes here with the Ashtakavarga points. If we look at the Ashtakavarga points for Capricorn, we see that Capricorn is um, 23 here for the 1788 chart. And then we've got a very low score of 18 for the 1901 chart. So by both of these charts, we can see that this entire Saturn in Capricorn transit is going to be difficult. It's, there's, it's going to be a, a bad transit. I'm just going to phrase it like that. It's, it's not going to be a good transit. Do, will the transit improve when Saturn moves into Aquarius? Are we going to see some better times? Because this Saturn transit, Saturn will shift in Jan, Feb, January, February 2023. We are going to have a shift and that's going to be on for two and a half years. That's through to about 2025. So do we have an improvement? Well, it's interesting. Through the 1788 chart, no, we do not. But through the 1901 chart, yes, we do. So here's how I'm going to predict on all of this. So let's let's take a look at 1788 chart. What predictions do I have? So from 2023 to 2025, what am I seeing? I'm seeing Saturn will be ninth from the ascendant, seventh from the moon. The Ashtakavarga aggregate score is 21. It actually drops. Okay, so I don't like that there's a drop. In the figure. Um, I'll just read out what I've got here. I've said travel will reopen but will still be being restructured. It doesn't feel smooth to me the travel thing with the way that these uh, are set up here. The government will still be trying to impose strict rules. I do think that will continue with this particular chart. People will still be under the constriction of strict rules. Saturn will be opposite the moon. So this placement, I think, is going to cause a lot more awakening within this country. Okay, so if you've got friends and family who only watch mainstream media, they only watch Channel 7 and Channel 9, and that's it, and they're very happy with the government, and I know a lot of people like this. And it's been an interesting one for me because, like, you know, I met someone the other day, <coughs> I was at the park and I met someone who I really, really like enormously. And I think she's such a wonderful person, but she said to me, oh, I'm so happy with the government and, you know, isn't it great? And, oh, they're doing such a good job. And, and I just kind of, I smiled, I said, yeah, they, yeah, they really are. And, I, you know, I, I couldn't, um, speak uh, and I don't typically I, I do that on YouTube here but otherwise yeah in real life I tend not to speak much um, so yeah I, I think that people like you know the lovely friend of mine who I met in the park I mean I'm sure she will um, this will be a window where people like that are gonna wake wake up I don't want to use that phrase that's a kind of ugh, I don't like that phrase but they're going to they're gonna broaden their minds. They're going to see more. How about that? Yeah. Uh, we've also got a natal Saturn return with this chart, which is pretty amazing. So with that can come a bit of pain because when Saturn's doing his natal return, he presses on some links. Um, but I've got the note here, for those who are blind or asleep, things will be tough still. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna feel that pressure. They're going to feel that pinching kind of sensation of Saturn passing over natal Saturn. Let's take a look at the 1901 chart and see what I've got here in terms of predictions. This is so much better what I see here. So again, we're looking at 2023 20, to 2025. We've got Saturn 11th from the moon. We've got him 6th from the ascendant. You cannot get better than that. We've got an Ashtakavarga aggregate score, um, Samudhya Ashtakavarga score of 33 in this house. I mean, that is just phenomenal. So I've got the notes here. Government will experience an awakening. Wow. Perhaps be more progressive like Sweden. I mean, I'm like praying for that every day, please. Oh gosh, I just saw lightning out the window. Is that a sign? I think that's a good sign. I'm going to take that as a sign. Uh, Australia's reputation on the world stage can massively improve with this transit. 
I hope so, because what I've observed, having lived about 16 years of my life overseas in England, um, that's from about 2004 to 2020, I have observed that, yeah, my friends overseas, they're kind of looking at Australia going, oh my goodness, what are you guys going through? Like, it's, our reputation over there is bad. Whereas people here, like, you know, the, the lovely lady in my community who I met at the park and um, a friend of mine who I speak to sometimes on Zoom and friends I grew up with here, they think everything's wonderful here. And all my overseas friends are just like, they're shocked at what's going on here. So it's very interesting. Uh, I've got the note here, travel will reopen and Australia can be a leader in showing the way, showing the way forward. If Australia's final financial health is poor, this will be highlighted during these two years. But if, financials, if, if Australia's financial health is strong, it will get stronger at this time. So that's an interesting thing because we've got Saturn opposite Mars. If we have debts and things like that, I feel like it could be more problematic. But equally, if we're really strong financially, we've got 33 points here, it could, things could in fact improve. We could be doing better. So it's difficult to predict. Because as I say, we've got 1788 chart. I can see Australia culturally in that chart, but 2023 to 2025 does not look good. And then in the 1901 chart, I can see Australia's government in that chart. And this transit is very good. So that's 2023 to 2025. It's looking good. It's looking like improvement. It's looking like, um, you know, the government could experience an awakening. Isn't that incredible? But with the 1788 chart, I'm seeing that the public will experience an awakening, but through pain. So it's difficult. Now, could the future be a bit of a mishmash of both of these charts? It could be, but I'm not sure. And I'm going to be observing with a very keen eye to see which of these two charts is the more dominant. Sorry, the camera got cut again, but I think what I was saying was that it's a real dilemma to try and predict for a country when there are so many options for charts, when there are so many possibilities. I mean, we've got five here and then another two if Australia is a company or something completely different. The thing I think there is that we've got Ketu in Scorpio right now and it's a suppression energy. It's a suppression energy in a hidden place. So I feel like we're not going to get truth. And I'm sure I've mentioned this in past videos. We're not going to get truth until that Rahu Ketu axis shifts. So that's, I think it's next year in March. If I'm mistaken, I'll put a correction notice on the screen. But guys, I hope this has been interesting to, to dabble in, to take a look at. But what I can tell you is that while I'm, I'm, not, I'm not so confident reading country charts, I've expressed that on, on this channel before, especially I know with America. See, now America is really interesting because so many astrologers, there is a particular chart that they all do use and they love it and it works. And also many astrologers, they've been doing this for 20 or 30 years and I haven't. So, you know, they're very comfortable with their own country's chart. Me, I've been doing this for a shorter time. I'm, I'm very confident working with an individual because that's one person, one chart, one time, one place of birth. You know, that's just one, one, one. I'm very happy to go deep into an individual, but uh, I have, yeah, definitely, um, I'm not the most confident with country charts. So it is the kind of thing that maybe if I've been doing this for a decade or two, uh, you know, then I would be a lot more confident and, and I, I would have over time been matching things up myself and being able to see and being able, you know, be able to say with a lot of confidence. But, but I've read the 1788 chart and the 1901 charts in as reliable a way as I can. 
you know, Saturn's transit is the most reliable. That's where the playing field changes every 2.5 years. Once you've got that change, then you can start reading finer. You can start reading the smaller planets to see but you've got to get the playing ground right. And I'm really enjoying using Samudya Ashtaka Varga because it, and I've always checked in with this, this is very important. There are certain techniques that this holds, um, but yeah, I, I, love, I love using this as well, just to see, all right, is that 2.5 years, is that gonna be, you know, is that gonna deliver us good stuff or is it, is it gonna be challenging? So, I hope you've enjoyed this video guys let me know in the comments below how you got on with this video but I wanted to get it out and overall I, I do believe that this country is going to flourish I, I don't see that um, yeah I'm, I'm a really proud Aussie I love that I was born and raised here I, this is a fantastic place it absolutely is and um, you know, I, I think the 30s <clears throat> around the world is just going to be absolutely amazing. And that is something that I will cover when I look at, say, for example, I want to look like two decades ahead. I want to do something like that. So stick around on the channel. We're going to have more good stuff coming up. So let me know how you get on. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.